Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel and in today's video, I'll be sharing all my last mini tips on how to do well or to get A plus for your biology paper in SPM. So let's get right into it. My first tip is to watch YouTube videos in order to study biological processes. And this isn't necessarily a last mini tip, it's like a general tip. Whenever you want to learn biology, watching videos is definitely a good way to do it because in biology, there are just so many processes that we have to know and that we have to be able to elaborate on, whether in our body or for plants, for photosynthesis, light reaction, dark reaction. There are a lot of processes that are significant in biology and those are the things which will be tested on in essay questions. And essay questions, as you all know, is a huge part um, in contributing towards that A plus in biology. So if you can understand and memorize most of the biological processes in biology, then getting an A plus in biology shouldn't be a problem. For me, I've always known that watching videos would help, but then I've never really incorporated it into my studies until recently when I've um, been watching a lot of videos on anatomy on, because I'm learning anatomy and you have to know about all the tiny parts in our bodies. For example, in this hand itself, we have like eight bones over here. And I actually found that me watching a 10 minute video is more effective than just reading from a textbook for an hour and the information is not going in. Instead of like trying to force information into your brain, you can have someone to explain it to you. And we are privileged in this era to be able to access to YouTube and watch YouTube videos by professionals all around the world. So why not make good use of that? So what I do is I would search videos on a particular process that I want to understand and you can do the same, just search on the process that you want to understand. Um, maybe it's light reaction or dark reaction of photosynthesis. So just type that into the search bar and you're going to watch the video, but don't watch the video passively. You're going to take notes when you're watching the video, at least that is the way which worked for me. I find that watching videos passively won't help as much because you're just listening and you're not actively taking notes that just doesn't help as much as taking notes so, so the video will be playing and i'll be taking notes from it and if sometimes i can't catch up with what is being said i'll pause and then i'll write down and you can rewind it whenever you want to which is a great advantage because when you go to lectures the lecturer will just be lecturing non-stop and it will be kind of rude almost to interrupt him or her but with youtube videos you can just type back and and a great thing about it is you can learn a single process within 10 minutes. In a 10 minute video, you might learn more from what you are reading from your textbook for an hour if the information couldn't enter your brain, right? Just watch a 10 minute video and usually a 10 minute video will come around to 40 minutes. I would use around 40 minutes to understand a 10 minute video because I'm, I'm constantly taking notes on it and if there's a lot of stuff, then it takes more time. But 40 minutes is still better than an hour if the information could enter your brain and you can put it under your long-term memory then that 40 minutes is definitely worth it. And we'll proceed to my second tip which is on KBAT. It's just my opinions on KBAT. And I think that you don't have to worry too much about KBAT questions. I know that it's getting more and more. Even for my year, there were a lot of KBAT questions for biology, I remember. And I remember there was this one question on a square watermelon. They showed a picture of a square watermelon that year. And before uh, I sat for my SPM, I didn't even know that square watermelons existed, but somehow they did. And the question was, um, how do you think they produced square watermelons? So as science students, a lot of us wrote that um, it's produced through genetic engineering meaning um, you change the DNA and incorporate it into this watermelon, into the seed, and that is why the watermelons produced are square. A lot of people wrote that, including me, but it turns out that the answer was just to put these watermelons into squares when they were growing. So you're going to let it grow into the square box. That is the answer. It's not even genetic engineering or anything scientific. And there were also a lot of other questions which I couldn't really remember but there was some but I remembered that there were around six KBAT questions I think and each carried around two to three marks so I would say around 18 marks in total and what I did was I went through all the questions that are not KBAT first I just went through and answered all the questions which are from the syllabus and when I'm done with that 
I went back to the K-pop Christians and just wrote whatever I could think of. They might not even have made sense. But, well, don't worry too much about K-pop Christians because chances are your friends and students all over Malaysia can't answer these K-pop Christians. I mean, they are just things that we won't usually know, like who would know how to make square with the manners, not me in Form 5. Well, so everyone is going to have to do the K-pop questions and almost everyone won't be able to answer the K-pop questions. So what differentiates you and the other person is your knowledge about biology, which is actually in the syllabus. That is what's going to separate you from A plus or from A, A minus. Is everything that is actually in the syllabus, which is why, which is why my perception on k questions is always just to not worry about it. Because in my opinion, at least, I feel like if I can answer every single question that is from the syllabus and is actually being taught to us, then I think that I can get that A+. plus. As simple as that. You don't need to worry about k questions. And number three, these are some of the must-study topics for biology. So if you're running out of time, then maybe you can start by going through all these topics first. And what I want to say is about mitosis and meiosis. It, um, these two are really important processes and you should really know all the steps and how to draw it. Please um, go through the diagrams and redraw it and know every single step in the process. It could be tested in essay, it could be tested in paper 1. And in fact, I feel like the phases in mitosis and meiosis are a must question for paper 1. They'll show you a picture and then they'll ask you to identify which stage it is, which phase it is. So it is best if you can memorize the entire process of meiosis and mitosis and you're able to write it out from memory. Just work on that and then that's and dynamic ecosystem is also a famous question for essay, especially on the process of eutrophication. So there are around eight steps, I think, and try to memorize all those eight steps. So number four is on essay questions. And for essay questions, usually we answer in continuous writing form, meaning we write everything into paragraphs. And what I have previously said about paragraphing is do not squeeze too many points into one single paragraph because the examiners are marking um, hundreds and hundreds of exam papers and they are looking through a lot of answers and if your handwriting is not particularly nice um, they might miss some points if you're rushing for time and your handwriting is all like scrunched up and you are squeezing everything into a huge paragraph then they might miss out on some points and you don't want that to happen which is why you have to organize your paragraphs maybe write two or three points in one paragraph and that's it begin with another paragraph again and it is not always necessary to answer essay questions in paragraphs form you can even answer it in table form and some of the examiners actually prefer it if you organize your answers into table form because they can clearly identify all your answers so if the essay question is asking for differences between something and something, then you might want to consider using a table to organize your answers better. But just remember that when you're writing your answers in a table form, do not write short and brief um, answers. You still have to write it in full sentence. That's one thing which you should remember. Number five is to do really well in paper three. So I used to hate doing paper three, but then paper tree is actually meant to help you because if you know all the techniques, then it is easy to score. Obviously, for a few marks, you have to actually know the experiments. But most of the points in paper tree don't actually come from the experiment. It just comes from what is given to you in the diagram and your basic knowledge of paper tree. So there are techniques when it comes to answering paper tree. And I have done a video on biology and chemistry paper tree. But yeah, I'll leave the link to the biology video, um, paper tree video in the description box below. And in that video, I have actually talked through an example for paper tree. And um, I talked about how to answer each and every question, um, hypothesis, what you need to have in that, and how to answer each branch in the question. So yeah, definitely go watch that. If you are still unsure about the biology paper tree technique, because I think that doing well in paper tree is so, so important in order to get A plus in biology because paper tree is meant to help you and 
by just knowing the technique, there are a certain amount of marks that you can already get. And it doesn't matter if you don't know how to do the experiment, if you can't remember the procedure, um, that is only a, around three marks. So what is important is all the other stuff that you can answer based on your basic knowledge, you have to know the technique of answering this paper sheet. Sixth tip is on essay plans and as you all might know, I do essay plans for Sejara and for biology as well. So for those subjects which require a lot of understanding, um, I think that to do well in essay, I need to do a lot of essay plans and read those essay plans again and again. So what I did was, even if I have already finished studying the entire syllabus, I would begin around one or two weeks away from SPM biology paper and I would um, pick out the processes which I think are important or the stuff which I think are important and rewrite all that onto pieces of paper. Um, it could be a notebook or it could just be um, loose papers, whatever it is, just organize every single thing that you think might come out for essay question into that notebook. And I think that when it comes to making essay plans, one of the most important parts is just to write all your notes on your own and transfer some of the stuff into your memory while you're doing that because once you write it on your own you're putting some of it into your memory and when you read it again and again eventually you remember all that stuff and some of you guys have actually asked me how to prepare essay plans like how do you predict essay and which essay will come out and all that stuff and usually what i do is i would do a lot of exercises the activity books that you get from bookstores like Pelangi, Oxford, all that, I would get those and I would look at the essay questions that are asked in those activity books and I would take note of it. So when you do a lot of questions and um, do a lot of exercises, you'll notice a pattern okay, um, which is most commonly asked and you know. And what you can do now is you can analyze all those activity books or analyze the questions which you have attempted before and for those questions make essay plans for it um, if, and it's definitely not too late to make essay plans usually i'll be rushing with my essay plans as well i'll start like maybe a week away and then one day away i'll still be um, making new essay plans and then reading old essay plans and all that stuff so it's definitely not too late to start making essay plans your essay plans don't have to be really complete, it could be brief, but just make sure that all the most important stuff are in there. And you can go totally creative with your essay plans. You can use an A4 paper and fold it into four sides and use one of each side for one essay plan. You can organize it according to chapters. You can do anything you want with those essay plans. And I honestly think that making essay plans is one of the key points to getting and A plus in biology, it helps me so, so much. And I think that in biology, there are a lot of stuff to remember. There are so many facts and you have to narrow it down to the things which can be asked for essay questions. Because for structure, if you roughly know, you can answer. But for essay questions, if they're asking about the process of mitosis, you won't be able to answer it unless you know every single step. So by narrowing it down, you are relieving yourself of the stress of having to read a lot of stuff because most of the stuff in that thick reference book will be tested for objective only anyway. So do not waste your brain capacity on something which you can be able to answer without really um, using your brain juice and everything. So you have to use your memory for the stuff which are actually important and those are the essay plans that you'll be making in order to write those essays in SPM. So those are all the tips that I have when it comes to scoring A plus for biology in SPM. And I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you did like it, remember to leave me a like. And that's all for today's video. I wish you all the best for your biology SPM paper. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.